Welcome back to the Big Tire Garage. Once again, it is time for our weekly Q&A session here from inside the shop. Now, if you don't remember, if you comment on one of my videos, I randomly go through the comments, pick one of your questions that you ask, and if I choose to answer it here in one of these videos, then you will receive a sticker pack in the mail. Now, right now, we're sending out Lockjaw, Big Tire Garage, and Bad Old Wagon stickers. I do have a shop truck sticker in the works. So this week, I've chosen four questions. Two of them are actually pretty similar, and so we're gonna start with question number one. Here we go. Question number one. Question number one is, oh, it's a real short one. I didn't have to put my glasses on for this one. From N -O, Amber and Randy Stuffle, you've already had a question answered. You know what? I'll send you another sticker pack anyway. Here we go. Amber and Randy Stuffle. Why have you never built a YJ? Well, that's absolutely untrue. I have built a YJ. So I have a YJ that I built that we call the shop truck. Now the YJ is basically like most of my Jeeps. All that exists of that YJ is the grill shell, the hood, the windshield frame, and the brake pedal bracket, and the VIN number. Everything else was custom. So I built that truck years ago for Crawl Magazine uh, as when, when I used to be part of the ownership group of that magazine when I was their tech editor. And I built that as sort of like a throwback, cool, old school shop truck mixed with a hardcore crawler. Uh, there's been a couple really cool sort of like video uh, vignettes done about that truck, one by my friend Will at Heavy Metal Concepts. If I can, I'll put a link to it right in one of these spots, I don't know, somewhere up there. Uh, so you can watch it, get the whole backstory of it. But uh, what happened was I built that when I was part of Crawl and then when I left Crawl uh, and basically we started the official Big Tire Garage, I renamed it the Big Tire Garage Shop Truck. The cool thing is, is you're gonna be able to see that truck as part of a nationwide tour this fall that we're doing with eBay Motors. So I'm gonna basically bring the truck into the shop, give it a quick once over, refresh it with a bunch of parts that I'm gonna buy on eBay Motors. Then it's gonna head out to the Jeep Jamboree in Moab and then eventually it will go on tour and end up at the LA Auto Show. So you're gonna be able to see it out, out and about as we like to say in Canada. Question number two. Um, I, oh, you know what? I'm gonna save that question for the last. So question number two and three are similar, so I'm gonna bundle them together, but I am gonna send you both sticker packs. So the first one is XV Metalworks. I like the included detail of CNC design and cutting. Is it worth the design time and cut time on the table over just cutting by hand for the tabs and smaller items? I get it for the trailing arms and bigger things, I'm just curious. So he's referring to uh, the video where I took you guys step by step through just making a little filler plate for the, uh, for the link bracket and why I did that on the CNC table versus just like quickly carving it out by hand. So that's his question. Uh, the next second part of that question is from Thomas Irwin. So my son who enjoys working with computers is fascinated by the use of CAD and the fabrication progress. On your Q&A session, can you talk about learning to use the plasma table as far as difficulty? What was involved for you to use it effectively? And that, once again, is from Thomas Irwin. So those two questions kind of go hand in hand because I was kind of never really a fan of plasma tables. I didn't think I needed one. And the reason I didn't think I needed one is for the exact reason that the first question asked me. Why would I spend all that time drawing something when I can quickly cut it out by hand? Because I do a lot of onesie twosie things. You know, I'm not a production shop. Uh, I build one vehicle at a time. Well, multiple vehicles at a time, but they're never the same. I'm not like repeating the same part for multiple projects, I just don't do that. And so in my head, I sort of said, it's not worth my time. I had a couple small little plasma tables when I started, little CNC, I had a little four by four that actually held on to the handheld torch and would cut stuff out. Um, and it never really worked very well. And that kind of put me off uh, the whole CNC world, to be honest with you. Then I spent some time talking to some people who had actually embraced the world of CNC and had spent the time to learn how to use it and use it effectively. And what they said to me was, you just gotta bite the bullet. You gotta bite the bullet, you just gotta spend some time drawing tabs, drawing things, learn how to use the software end of it first, and then you'll find that when you transition into being having to make custom stuff quickly, you'll be able to just quickly sit down at a simple CAD program and, and bang one out. 
Now, CAD was not a foreign thing for me. Back when I taught high school uh, back in Canada in like the early 90s, wait, when was that? That was, sorry, late 90s, uh, early 2000s. I was teaching CAD in some uh, grade nine shop classes. So we ha I understood the premise of CAD, I knew how to use it, but I felt that I was just, there would be too much of a learning curve for me to get it up to speed to be able to make it quick for me. Then I met Russ from Fast Cut CNC and he was really sort of pushing me. He's like, you gotta get a table in your shop, you gotta get a table in your shop. Once you get a table in your shop, trust me, you're never gonna look back, you're gonna use it all the time. And so then finally I said, you know what? All right, we got this new building, we're putting the new shop in, we just launched Four Wheeler TV, we're starting all these new things, let's put a table in there and let's go from there. Maybe I'll use it every now and then. That's what my brain thought at the time. Honestly, I thought it would just sit over there and I'd probably never use it. Well, fast forward a few months and I started to do exactly what Andrew from Let's Roll Off Road told me to do. And that's the gentleman who told me to just bite the bullet and draw some stuff. And I started drawing tabs and brackets and things in Bentec using their uh, sheet flat, flat sheet software part of their program. And it became super easy to do. So at that point, I kind of jumped all in. I was like, okay. I felt like it was similar to when I started using Bentec Pro to design chassis and design roll cages. When I first got that software program uh, to do tube bending, I was just doing it to build full-blown chassis. So I was like, I'm gonna design the whole chassis in Bentec, and that way I can visualize it and I can sort of, it'll be easier than just bending a bunch of tube. Now I don't run a piece of tube through my bender without first drawing it in Bentec, even a simple hoop. It goes into Bentec, I draw it, I pull it out, mainly because I waste less tubing. And I thought, what if that ends up happening with my CNC flat plate? What if I end up wasting less plate because less mistakes, more repeatability, all of those things. And that is exactly what happened. When I spent time drawing, when I spent time just figuring out how to quickly, you know, drop a pick point, uh, learn how to manipulate the software in a way to be able to draw what I want it to draw fast, then it became a no brainer. I can honestly take some measurements, walk over to that table, draw it, have the table cut it faster than I could ever do it by hand, and more importantly, better. The lines are straighter, the arcs are cleaner. Everything is better when it comes off the plasma table because you can cut an arc by hand, but it's never gonna be perfect. And those tight arcs, you're, it's hard to get in there with a grinder and smooth it out and make it look good. And that's just extra time that you're spending in there. So my, so that is why I transitioned over to, yes, it is faster to use the plasma cutter, plasma table rather, to cut even small little brackets. Uh, what would I suggest to someone who's first getting into this? I would say do the, exactly what I did. Spend time drawing. Learn the software first. The table is just the table. The table is just a machine that will do whatever the computer tells it to do. When you can learn how to manipulate the software, then you can make that table do even more. I am a very bare bones, flat plate type of drawer. I only work in two dimensions. I have not transitioned into a SolidWorks or a Rhino or anything like that. That is probably where I need to go next, where I'm able to basically cut things out and then plan to bend them or break them in a press break. That's where I need to go next to basically make my stuff look even cooler. Um, but that's a whole other learning process that I'm going to go have. That is a whole other learning process that I'm going to have to go through to get to that point. So I hope that answers your questions um, for just those two those two spots. I really think that CNC plasma is an excellent tool to have in the shop to learn it. Spend time with the software first. Don't worry so much about the table. Just learn how to draw stuff and manipul manipulate it inside that uh, CN that inside that CAD universe. Uh, and then learn the software and then, because the output from the software to the uh, sheet cam to the cut, that is the easy part. It's the drawing that you need to uh, master first. So there you go. Thank you very much. And I can't say enough about my fast cut CNC table. You see, I use it all the time, all the time. There isn't a day that, that table doesn't turn on in the shop. And I would never go back after this point. I'll never go back to not using a CNC table. All right, so this last question is gonna be a little controversial for some of you, um, but it's, it, it needs to be answered and it's kind of relevant time-wise. So, uh, so this is from Jim T. He said, I really like the attention to detail on your builds as much as I like the old bang it together and run it stuff. I really like the well thought out engineering on all your builds. Great work. 
With the recent announcement of the end of Dirt Every Day series, I'm glad to see all you off-road guys getting back on YouTube. Mototrend seems to not be supporting you guys in the off-road world like they should. So let me start off by saying I was as shocked as everybody else to hear that Dirt Every Day was canceled. I was kind of bummed, you know? It was a, one of my favorite shows to watch, just like you guys. Uh, I love Fred and Dave, I think they're awesome on camera. They have a great sort of chemistry together and the show was fun to watch. Why did they cancel Dirt Every Day? I don't know. Those are decisions that are made at many different levels at a network and sometimes nobody ever has like a clear cut answer as to why that sh sh series was canceled. Um, trust me, if you work in this world of television, and when I say television, I mean streaming, this, that, it, I just, it's all TV. You know, going in, that this isn't a career that you're gonna retire from. You're, you know, when I started doing my first television show, I thought I'd get like two, three years and then I'd be back teaching high school in Canada. I really did, I didn't think that I'd be doing it for 15-ish years. Um, so saying that, you know, it's just part of the game. You know, you see very popular television shows on prime time, big networks get canceled. It's just, it's part of life, that's just what happens. But I will say this, I firmly believe that Fred and Dave will probably end up on another television show somewhere. Trust me, look at me. I, my show wasn't even canceled. I was just sort of asked to leave. The show then was canceled the next year after I was off of it, but that's a whole other story. Um, then I ended up on another television show that I absolutely love making almost more than my original television show. I love making Four Wheeler. Now, speaking of the Motor Trend Network, I can tell you from experience, I have worked with many networks over my career, many, at least five or six, believe it or not. And I can tell you that for someone who's involved in the automotive space of making content or TV shows or whatever terminology you want to use, I have never had a better partner in the production of these shows than Motor Trend. The entire upper echelon of Motor Trend or middle echelon that I deal with, I guess, has been nothing but supportive in every way of the shows that we make. So to say that Motor Trend is not supporting the off-road guys, I certainly don't feel that. I think that Motor Trend has been a great partner. Great partner for Four Wheeler, great partner for Four Before Garage, great partner for Carcraft, great partner for everything that I've ever done with them. So now this will transition into the next bunch of comments I get is sh I'm canceling the Motor Trend app. Well, don't do that for a couple reasons. Number one, there's still tons of awesome content on Motor Trend Plus. Lucky Costa got a new co-host, Alex Taylor, on Hot Rod Garage. That has given that show new life and it is awesome to watch. Faster with Finnegan is better than ever and it just keeps getting better. Uh, and as I said before, there's probably a good chance that Dave and Fred are probably gonna end up on another show at Motor Trend. It would not surprise me at all that in a year or two, they pop back up on the network. So then you're just gonna be resubscribing anyway because you're gonna wanna watch them again. That's, that's, so I don't, I don't think you should cancel the app just because they canceled one of the shows that you like on the app. You know there's lots of shows on there you like. Just keep watching. All right, so hopefully that answered your questions this week, guys. Once again, I'll send you a message to uh, kick me out your address so I can send you out some sticker packs. Thank you so much for hanging out here in the Big Tire Garage. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. Thank you very much.